Sure. Thanks, Christine. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Wonderful. All right. Well, we've got, uh, actually, Christine, do you mind bringing up the slides? Actually, Jennifer, you're, you're first, so would you mind bringing up the slides? Yeah, and I'm sorry, I, everybody's gonna get really tired of my voice. <laughs> but I promise this is, I'll, I'll uh, make this quick and then yield the floor to others. Let me just get the slides up. All right. Uh, how's that? Great. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, well, let's dive right in. So as, as of yesterday, we had a, uh, two themes that we went through. We went through the theme of user experience and then data exchange. And the following showcases and demos that you're about to see are under the theme of professional development. Next slide, please. So to match some of the country level priorities or, or just to call them out, uh, we repeatedly hear the need for sustainable, locally owned solutions and uh, that there's great interest in the community addressing human resource and capacity gaps. So that means for us as a community, we've been following the following direction. We've been looking to create professional development experience that can bolster community and in-country technical capacity. And uh, in terms of the key projects, there are uh, flight paths and getting started guides, as well as the fellowship program and open MRS academies. And we're going to learn a bit more about these in the following demos. Next slide. So um, in addition to uh, some of these projects, there are some implementers to watch in this space, like iTech Digi, UCSF, Gemby, and University of Washington. Next slide. All right, well, let's get started with OpenMRS Flight Paths. Over to you, Jen, as our first presenter. Thanks, Grace. So um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our flight paths and start off by what we hear from newcomers and what we hear from squad leads. So we hear from newcomers that they come to OpenMRS because they wanna work on something that will help save lives around the world. And they are interested in doing X, Y, and Z. It's actually quite a, a wide range. Um, how, do they, how do I get started? That's what they want to know. And then we hear, I followed the getting started for developer's guide and it didn't really help me when I joined X squad. From what, and what we've heard from squad leads more and more is we wanna work on solutions that have value for implementations. We have a lot of new people showing up, which is great and asking us questions, which is great, but we're spending so much time helping newcomers that we're losing momentum as a squad. So what do we do? You know, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. And we have people who are coming to our community who want to work on QA, who want to work on the front end, on the back end, on integrations, upgrades, concept management, website, events. Where do you start? Where do you go? So this is where OpenMRS flight paths come in. And what are they? These are opinionated paths to success within the community. They help individuals create something they're passionate about and have high value for the community. They are self-driven. They put individuals, when they come to the community, in the pilot seat from the beginning. Individuals choose a flight path, just like a pilot, but based on their own interests, their experience, skills, and availability. They are also community supported. So people who decide to follow a, a specific flight path receive community support. The further down in your chosen path you go, the more support you're likely to get. Um, and it's based on professional development tracks. So different flight paths can offer individuals the chance to grow a variety of skills. Like I said, from front-end or back-end development, to QA testing, to product management, to marketing and more. So what does this actually look like? Well, say you come to the community and 
where do you start? First of all, just explore the potential flight paths. What are out there? Get to know our community. Find out what those, what those different areas of specialization are and where the work actually happens. And then start to take off, right? Start going down that runway. Choose a flight path and get started through hopefully a special get, getting started guide and the open MRS stages. And then kind of like we do with GSOC, we have a bonding period, a community bonding period. Think about having a bonding period with your squad or team of interest. Join that squad or team, shadow them for a little while, figure out how they work, get to know who's who, and then start growing your reputation. As you, as you get further and further down your flight path and you take off, um, show that you have promise and you'll find that you receive greater responsibility and increased community and squad support. So, you know, one way that people can do this, explore these paths, you can think about what you're interested in. Are you interested in improving HIV data collection and access to high quality data? Do you want to support use of uh, open MRS at point of care? Do you want to support use of quality data? What about the continuum of care? Like sometimes the country priorities or community direction can influence what flight path you might want to take. It also might depend on your own skill set. Are you a front end developer, back end developer, product manager, technical writer, and educator? And then, you know, we hopefully will have different guides and tutorials um, that people can use to get started on their own so that squads don't have to answer um, some, some questions that are already laid out in the documentation. So it's not that we just, I just wanna say we don't have all these guides and tutorials yet, but um, you'll hear sometime in the next half hour about where we are with those. And then of course we have skill, open MRS skills and stages, which we've been expanding a little bit to, to move, um, to include not just developer and community engagement skills, but to include QA stages. And I should actually update this and say to include product management um, stages, thanks to Grace and Saruchi's hard work in laying those out. Um, and then, you know, of course we have those different squads and teams that I mentioned the other day. So um, as we work out um, what, what these different flight paths are, are like, we're asking ourselves first, why are people going to move from one, you know, come to the community and decide to contribute? And then what's going to mo that motivate them to choose a particular flight, flight path? And then what skills do they need and what tools might, might we have? So at the very first, you know, they might be, like we've heard, uh, very motivated by our mission to join. And then they can learn like some of the foundational community skills. Um, how to, you know, are, how do we how do we work as a community? Get to know the community, and what are the common tools that we use, like Talk, Jira, um, the Wiki, Slack. Um, but then, but then as you get to know the community, maybe your motivation shifts, and you're kind of motivated by some of those specific use cases that I mentioned a minute ago. And then you kind of have to figure out, okay, well, what are the specialized skills that I need in order to contribute to this squad working on this solution? And then what are the specialized tools that you might need, like React, in order to make that work um, and go further in your path? So, you know, we've mapped out the why, um, we've been mapping out the documentation or the, the pathway that people are, might be taking from the moment they land on our new website, which is coming soon on the Get Involved page to the wiki documentation, guide for the new curious and getting started as a developer to more specialized documentation, um, maybe on our dashboards, main project pages, pages and those, those getting started guides. So before um, I'm gonna, before I wrap up, um, in the next 30 seconds, you know, how, you know, this is all kind of an idea. We've been talking, you know, the documentation team has been talking about this a little bit. How do we actually make this happen? And how does it support growing capacity in our community? We have two opportunities at hand um, that have really been emerging and growing in the last, I'd say, month. One is our documentation team is receiving support from Google Season of Docs again this year. And in the next, um, up next, you're gonna actually hear from our technical writer, Brett, about how he's been working and moving um, this documentation project forward. The other opportunity is actually related to um, something you might've heard about yesterday, the technical assistance platform or TAP. 
um, who is kind of creating a capacity development package um, for not for Dicey, which you heard Jemby talk about um, yesterday, for leaders in informatics and for um, ORI and the 3.0 framework. So we see this as an opportunity to, you know, again, they're they're using a very similar approach, which which is learner driven um, and kind of having people decide on what track they want to go down. And so we're going to jump dive into a little bit more um, about that opportunity and how it aligns with our Open MS Academies during our breakout session. So I'm going to wrap up there and hand things back to Grace. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Jen. Well, yeah, speaking of documentation, uh, that's a great segue to our next team. Visible. Uh, so um, our documentation team, uh, who is our speaker for that? Just look here. All right, um, Brett Studer. Uh, welcome, Brett. We're looking forward to uh, hearing from you about what's been going on in the documentation team, which strives to support and maintain proper documentation for all parties and streamline documentation for a seamless onboarding experience from the time you see our website to the next flight path step with a squad or a team. So over to you, Brett. Hi, everyone. Um... My name is uh, Brett Studer. I'm the technical writer uh, with OpenMRS right now as part of Google Season of Docs 2021. I'm working with the documentation team. Um, before I keep going, so I had the implementer showcase pulled up. Do you want me to just share it from my side? Yeah, go for it, Brett. Okay, that'll just take me one moment. Please hold on. Okay, so um, now I've been here since about late May, and in that time, the documentation team has put a few things together. So um, currently within the past two months, we have started reviewing a lot of the onboarding documentation, uh, just meaning new user guides that relate to um, new contributors um, from the span they first come to the wiki to when they are actually making hands-on contributions. We've additionally made some improvements to how we want to align and organize the information so stuff isn't repeated or becomes redundant, so information is easy to find, uh, and so on. So some of our projects that we've been working on include the Guide for the New and Curious, which is one of the first uh, introductory materials a lot of new members will come across. It shows them how to access a lot of important open MRS materials, but we really want to improve that page and I'll show how we did that. Additionally, we created a project page template and this is gonna be for existing, but primarily future project pages. Um, the idea is by following through with a template, the information can be more easily organized and new users can find the relevant information they want. We are also gonna hopefully make some changes to the active projects page. Um, the idea is that we can introduce mechanics that allow users to filter based on the skill sets required, allowing them to more easily find a project they're comfortable with. So here is an example of our project page. This is what it will look like on the um, creator side of things. There's a readme and with each section, there are several lines of text that just explain how the section is to be used, what kind of content will go under each subhection subsection uh, and so on. So basically these pages will contain information like the current status of the project, its context within OpenMRS's holistic goals. Um, it will include, of course, team communication links. So Slack channels, meeting times, things like that, uh, team member names. A lot of this stuff is currently already on most project pages. However, um, the documentation team thinks by creating a consistent format, uh, not only do these pages look aesthetically more pleasing sometimes, but it's a bit more convenient 
for the user's sake. So this is currently our revised guide for the new and curious. Now you'll notice this um, looks substantially different than the page in its current state, uh, if you've seen it recently. So our goal when it came to improving this page was taking away some of the uh, more expository content about OpenMRS as a whole, and then honing in more on the instructional content that shows them how to get set up and how to start contributing. The idea is that new users coming into OpenMRS as aspiring contributors likely know a lot about our goals, what we're trying to accomplish and so on. They've probably been to our website. They've probably seen the home pages that have this information. So for the revised guide for the new and curious, we wanna focus strictly on the instructions and the help they need to actually get started and to begin contributing. So it begins just showing them um, when it says learn about OpenMRS, it's less about our organization as a whole and more how we collaborate together. Then it shows them how to sign up for communication channels. It will explain to them the difference of squads versus teams and what different groups we have working in there, the kind of skill sets required. And then finally, it will give them some other cool resources. They should bookmark things like the OpenMRS calendar, uh, talk, things like that. It will show them how to start their own project if necessary, um, those types of helpful things. Most of that stuff is currently on the existing guide. We just organized it to be more um, step by step, um, a little more cleaned up, and as we said, focused more on the instructional element. So let's talk about where we go from here. We want to continue the development of the onboarding documentation toolkit and getting started guides. We want to improve the new user experience. We're going to start deploying those pages we discussed and a few others onto the wiki for mass use by OpenMRS contributors. Um, feedback is important. We also want to, once these pages deploy, start taking in more feedback from those who have actually had to use these pages firsthand. And then finally, um, as I'm, I believe, the sole technical writer right now, we want to start mentoring community members on how to maintain these documents over time. I will be here until about September or October. And then going from there, though, we want these pages to continue being sustainable and improved if necessary. So right now, what we're looking for is a few developers and squad members to start gauging feedback for the new project page templates. Um, we're all pretty accessible and we're very receptive to criticism. Um, we really do want to make these pages, um, you know, very easy to use. If there are problems and experience, we're very interested in that and we're looking to fix that if necessary. Um, additionally, now we're going to start working with a few squads to improve their own specific getting started guides and we want them to be consistent with a greater theme. Currently, we've been making some um, advances with the micro front end team and the fire squad. All of that stuff is deliberative right now. Nothing has actually been created, um, but we are looking to get in touch with a few other squads as well. So if this is something you are interested in, the docs team um, is, is also interested in working with you. That is all, thanks. Wonderful, thanks so much, Brett. Uh, it's really great to hear about the progress that's happening there. Uh, since documentation is such a key and um, frequently mentioned uh, area um, where, where we can continue growing as a community. All right, well, over to our Open MRS Academy squad. The goal of this squad is to support the long term sustainability of Open MRS products and implementations by creating Open MRS Academies that expand local Open MRS capacity. So, for this particular one, I'm going to hand things over to, uh, to Christine Gichuki. Over to you, Christine. Okay, great. Um, thank you. Let me just share my screen. Okay, so I'll just give a brief update on what's happened so far since, uh, since the last uh, meeting. Um, so what happened is that um, uh, during that, that quarter, we got feedback from the community on the training material that had been uh, created. And what was done is that um, the material was updated and then finalized. Um, once the material was finalized, we then disseminated and shared the material with the Nepal team. Um, who uh, who initially showed uh, who have shown interest in hosting the first um, uh, 
sorry, hosting the first, um, their first fundamentals um, academy, uh, but which hasn't yet happened. Uh, apart from that, the other thing that has been hap that happened in between that quarter was um, we've been discussing about uh, potential ways of uh, setting up a sustainability plan uh, for the Open MS um, Academy. And so over the course, there have been a few discussions and uh, what we'll be hoping to move on from there would be coming up with a documentation that would help support this. Uh, one thing I should mention about, uh, which is not included here, is that also as part of the Open MS Academy squad, uh, we're trying to, uh, we are merging, uh, trying to merge together with the Hackathon Planning Group for the TAP initiative and to see how much we, uh, how much the two teams can leverage from each other from the material that has already been developed. So in terms of focus for the upcoming quarter, we'll be still looking into supporting implementations and countries that are interested in uh, supporting the, the Fundamentals Academy course. Um, in this case, we're still looking with a key focus on Nepal, we've shown interest. And of course, um, continue with the drafting of uh, the sustainability plan that uh, will help to inform. And then we are still focusing, uh, we are still seeking on people who can uh, be contact experts, help in developing curriculums, and of course, um, be facilitators either on ground or, or even online. And then of course, we still do need support in terms of development of the OpenMRS uh, Academy sustainability strategy. Um, Thank you. That's the update for the Academy Squad. Thank you so much, you, Chris. Yeah, yes. thanks so much. <laughs> um, well, uh, now um, a moment uh, of great excitement is that we get to hear from an implementer. It's always so wonderful to hear from implementers about what you're working on. And um, today I have the privilege of welcoming Robai Kisia from uh, the AMPATH team. Robai, I don't know if you are able to share your screen, but please um, go ahead. Welcome. Um, thank you so much, Grace. Uh, I'll share my screen. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Robai. I'm the Quality Assurance Lead uh, from Ampat, and uh, we are going to sh uh, to showcase uh, what we are doing at Ampat. So, um, a brief introduction. Uh, Ampat is a partnership between Moy University, Moy Teaching and Referral Hosp Hospital, uh, Northern America University, funded by you said. Uh, Pepsa. Uh, Grace, are you able to see my screen? No, not yet. Can you try sharing again? Is it possible maybe you could help share from your end? Yeah, no problem at all. All right, thank you. There we go. Over to you, Robai. Robai, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see it, Grace. Wonderful. Okay, thank you. 
So uh, a brief introduction. So AMPATH is a partnership between Moi University, Moi Teaching and Referral Hospital, North American U University, and uh, we are funded by USAID PEPFA. So uh, our current progress, uh, we are serving uh, more than 8 million Kenyans, and uh, we have more than 800 uh, clinical sites that we are operating. Next slide. So uh, we are operating uh, under the Western parts of Kenya, and uh, we have uh, different counties, for example, Transoya, Bungoma, Busia, Vihiga, Kakamega, Kisumu. Next, please. Uh, so um, this is our current numbers. So uh, we have sites that are using Kenya EMR. Uh, we have sites that are using uh, manual and we have uh, POC sites. So uh, currently we have around uh, 161, 161, 182 clients who are active in our facilities. Next. So our clinic workload uh, on average, uh, we have 400, 4,350 encounters that are filled per day. And we have approximately 1,000 providers. So um, what problems are we currently solving? So uh, we have uh, two main problems. One is missed appointments. Two, uh, we have incomplete workflow. So under missed appointments, uh, most of our clients, uh, some of them, uh, they forget their appointments. Some of them are self-transferred. Others are on transit. Other, uh, they have busy work schedules. So uh, we've been having uh, difficulties uh, managing our missed appointments. Then second, uh, we have incomplete workflow. So in our AMPATH POC system, so our current workflow uh, that is running, we have client registration, uh, starting a visit, updating patient information, uh, that is demographics and locator map. Uh, we have uh, our clients go through a triage and clinician desk, and then they can be referred uh, to either, we have different services. For example, we have social work. Uh, they can be sent to cancer screening. And then we have uh, labs. So what we are missing in our uh, current workflow, uh, we have not integrated uh, with the pharmacy system. Uh, and that is uh, our problem. Next slide. So um, our current work are in progress. Um, first, um, we are developing an SMS reminder module that will remind clients of their appointments. So uh, from our previous slide, we saw that one of uh, the problems we are experiencing uh, is the missed appointments. So uh, we'll have this module the SMS reminder module that will help our client that will help remind our clients of their appointment dates. Two, uh, we're working on an appointment module that will be able to store clinical appointments. So currently we are storing our appointments as observations. And next, um, we are customizing widgets on OpenMRS 3.0. Uh, so for example, currently we are working on building a HIV summary. We have other baskets and we have uh, different reports that we are using. Next, um, we are also working on tran transitioning, uh, storing of drugs from observations to drug orders. Next, please. So uh, we are also working um, on rolling out a module called Athia Stats uh, that is going to be compatible with MRS uh, that is going to help our providers uh, to conduct HIV testing services. 
Also, we are working on uh, creating 3.0 backend extension that will check if a client qualifies for a reminder. So the reminders will be displayed according to stipulated protocol protocols. Uh, next, uh, we're also working on some tools that are going to help us screen our clients for GBV uh, and VSC. That is gender-based violence and violence against children. Also, we are doing some enhancements on a home visit tool that is helping our providers uh, to conduct a home visit, collect information that is going to help our clinicians uh, make clinical decisions. Next, please. So uh, what is the plan for the next three to four months? So uh, one, uh, we are planning to have a systematic transition to the new front-end technology. So that is, we'll start from the patient chat to reports. Uh, next, we are planning to uh, customize our patient chat widgets. Uh, that is, we'll have, uh, we are able to view, we'll be able to view test results, vitals, order widgets. Um, also, we are planning to upgrade to OpenMRS version 2.4 and MySQL 8. Uh, our next plan is to integrate uh, with the pharmacy module so that we can have a complete clinic workflow. Next, please. So um, we have started uh, customizing the 3.4 front end environment and it is a already running on the MRS database. So uh, one of the achievements that we have done is building the HIV summary widgets, which is already running on the 3.4 environment. So uh, this is what Eric demoed yesterday. Next, please. So we have also uh, customized some of our reports. So we have uh, two reports. Uh, we have cross-border and OVC report that's already we have deployed in our production environment and they are using a uh, front-end framework. So uh, as you can see from our screen, one of the reports we have is the cross-border reports. Next, please. And we also have the OVC reports, uh, which is using a front-end framework in our production environment. Next, please. So uh, what are our pain points? So one, um, we are working on refactoring of reporting stored procedures uh, to be compatible with MySQL 8. We are also working um, for MRS POC to communicate with ARV's dispensing tool which, uh, so currently we have duplication of efforts because our POC system is not communicating with a system that is being used uh, in our pharmacy departments. So next, um, our focus will be to bring back clients who have uh, defaulted clinic appointments. So uh, we, we are going to achieve this by uh, building the SMS reminder that uh, it is going to, we'll have a system that will be sending uh, SMS to our clients to remind them of their appointment dates. And this we are hoping to uh, achieve our retention care and bring clients who defaulted their clinic and make them active. Next. So um, we also have key smart objectives, uh, one, is uh, to develop an EMR through a collaborative process that is going to avoid duplication of efforts. So uh, we're also going to integrate with the pharmacy module, uh, which will complete client management workflow. We are also going to build a system that will promote client adherence to treatment and retention. Next, please. So um, we also have uh, motivational quotes uh, that always motivates our team at AMPAT. So uh, it reads, 
While speedy implementation is an admirable goal, we are most focused on satisfaction of our customers and our quality of product. So to achieve this, we always involve our stakeholders uh, from, uh, from user requirements uh, to designing mockups, to development, to testing, and ensure that we implement uh, a product uh, that is according to our stakeholders' requirements. So uh, thank you so much. So in case of uh, any questions, you can post on the chat or get in touch with us. Thank you so much and back to you, Grace. Thank you, Rovai. This is always really helpful to uh, hear more from implementers just like yourselves and, and especially the pain points are very interesting.